Hello. Today, I'm going to show you this question. It's from the MIT Integration B qualifying round in 2022, and it's question number three. Q3 at the top there. And we can see it's an integral from 0 to 2022 of x squared minus the floor function multiplied by the ceiling function of x, all differentiated, integrated with respect to x. So firstly, what is like the floor and the ceiling function? The floor function is basically we're going to be rounding down. That's how we can think about that. And the ceiling function, we're going to round up. So it might be good to have a little look at those bits first and to sort of think about what's going to happen. So if we have an integer, when we round, we, we're already at the answer we're going to get when we round it afterwards. So the change, there's no change to them. They should be the same value. So what we can say is that they're equal to each other when we have an integer. So we know if they're equal, it's going to be an integer and vice versa as well. Beautiful. So we need to think about the parts inside then, basically when it's not an integer. So all for the bits when you have a decimal point or something like that. So we'll have a look at then different ranges of this. So if we take x in one column and then the product that we've got, so the floor multiplied by the ceiling. And if we think over the range, or over the interval x from 0 up to 1, but not including 0 and 1, so we don't want when it's an integer, we can see that what we'll have to do is, well, any value that we have in here would round down to 0 and round up to 1. So we multiply those two together, and we get 0 times 1 is 0. If we do the same thing from 1 to 2, it's going to round down to 1 and round up to 2. So what we'll find is it's going to be 1 times 2. Similarly for 2 to 3, we round down to get 2 and round up to get 3, times them together, and that gives us 6. So we can think of a general rule. If we go from one integer to the next integer, well, we round down to get n in this case, and round up to get n plus 1. So that's what we're going to have over any general interval from like 1 to 2, 2 to 3, any integer to the next integer. So we can consider then a integral just over this region. So we're going to consider what I'll call i dash, and we'll equal that then to the integral from n to n plus 1. And our integrand is going to be the same as what the original in the question was. So we have x squared minus the floor multiplied by the, the ceiling. And again, all with respect to x. So nice and easy then, because in this range, we can think about, okay, when it's n, we know that's an integer, and the whole thing will be 0. Beautiful. Same is true for n plus 1, because it's an integer. The whole integral should, well, not the integral, but the integrand should evaluate to be 0 at that point. So we only have to consider in the range in between the, the integrals, uh, the in integers. So we can do that by noticing now that because we're in this range, we can just replace our horrible bit there with this thing. So if we rewrote that in our integral, we have n plus 1, n, x squared minus n, n plus 1. Still integrated with, um, with respect to x. So when we compute this integral now, which we're allowed to do because n is just a constant, so it's effectively just the same as having a number there. So we can use the power laws and see that this is going to become, well, our x squared goes to x cubed over 3. And then we take away n, n plus 1 as a constant. And this is like x to the power of 0. So we raise the power, x to the power of 1, divide by 1. And we'll evaluate this at n and n plus 1. So when we sub these uh, limits in, what we're going to get is n plus 1 cubed over 3. Take away, well, when we put n plus 1 in here, we're going to have n, n plus 1, n plus 1. So there's two lots of n plus 1, so that gets squared. And then we'll take away when we substitute the n in. So it's going to be n cubed over 3 minus n, n plus 1, n. So there's n squared in that part. So n squared, n plus 1 all like that. So we can start expanding everything out now, expanding all our brackets out. We don't have to, you could collect like terms and figure out a different way, but sometimes it's just easier to expand everything out. So the first term here is going to give us n cubed over 3. Now it should be 3n squared, but when we divide by the 3, that'll leave us just with an n squared. Similarly for the n, and then the 1 will become 1 third. On the next term then, well you can see this, the square bracket there, the n plus 1 squared, 
would be like n squared plus 2n plus 1. So we multiply that all by an n, well, by minus n. So what we end up with is n cubed minus 2n squared minus n. Uh, the next part then, if we look at sort of the, the takeaway from the second limit, the n cubed over 3, that just stays the same. There's no expansion there. And finally, then we're going to get another n cubed and another n squared. These will be positive with our two negative signs there, combined together to make a positive. So we have plus n cubed and plus an n. So we can have a look through and compare all of our all of our powers, basically. If we think about n cubes, what have we got? So we have a third there. We have a minus a third there. So they're going to cancel straight away. That's very nice. Anything left over? Yeah, we have this n cubed here in the middle, or minus n cubed, and this one at the end as well. I know it looks like a circle, but it was a, a three that I've just drawn a bit wrong. So they will cancel out as well. So we'll move down to look at squares. We have one minus two. And this should be a square on the end, my apologies. And so another one there. And you'll see that 1 minus 2 plus 1 equals 0. So these will cancel out as well. Finally, for n, we just have this 1n and this 1n as well. Well, minus 1n, and they cancel out together. Put that already the other way. So all together, what's left over is just this third. So we can see our, our integral. If we just consider the range from like one integer to the next is always going to be a third. So the original that we gave, that I labeled i up in the top left over here, we can think about that as being just doing this, like the small integral that we did, the, the prime, loads and loads of times for each in different integer that we need to do. So our original is now going to be like the sum of all of these individual integrals. And what sum do we need to consider? Well, from n equals 0, the very first one, to the very end, which is going to be n equals 2001, 2021, not 22. Because if you think, like, we're going to stop at n plus 1, and that needs to be 2022, so n has to be 2021. So when we stick that all in here, this thing then evaluates to be the sum from 2021, sorry, from 0 to 2021 of 1 third which when we're just doing the sum of a constant, we can just multiply it by how many times we need to add it together. It's not 2021 because we have to include the zero as well. So it's 2022 divided by three. And that evaluates out to be uh, 674, if you stick that in your calculator. So beautiful, that should be the answer. And I'm pretty sure if you check the, the answers online, that would be the right one. So yeah, thank you.